Helldivers has finally arrived, and since its launch, the game's popularity has surged, drawing comparison to Power World's success. The visuals are cinematic, blending intense run and gun actions with the eliminations of bugs and automatons. Yes, sometimes that includes a teammate or even yourself, creating a cinematic yet thrilling spectacle. The gameplay stands out, featuring impactful gunplay and strategic positioning. Despite some criticisms, the microtransactions are quite fair, and it truly redefines what live service game should be, which I'll expand on further later. Due to the fact that this is a live service game, and depending on when you stumble upon this review, the game may be completely different. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's dive into it. Since its debut, Helldivers has experienced ups and downs, with many players initially unable to log into the servers. However, the most recent patch introduced an AFK timer, addressing issues for those leaving the game running or PS5 users putting their console into rest mode while still on the ship. This has significantly improved server access, allowing more players to join and queue up with friends. The game's comedic tone, heavily inspired by 1997 Starship Trooper, shines through despite earlier server capacity and crossplay issues. The game's popularity has continued to soar. This is partially thanks to the viral memes and discussion across social media, even sparking talks of ending the console war. A petition with over 90k signature at the time of this recording emerged, advocating for the game's release on Xbox to allow more players to join in on the fun to fight for freedom and democracy. When this game first launched, I was up at 3am waiting to play. After completing the tutorial when I tried to equip a helmet, my game crashed. I've since then crashed numerous of times during my 60 hours of playtime on this game, excluding the time I've spent waiting to get into the server. But the game runs buttery smooth with little to no frame drops. However, many PC players have faced challenges with frequent crash and blue screens of death. AMD users in particular have encountered numerous of performance issues, while Nvidia users like myself have fared better, experiencing smoother gameplay. Outside of the crashing and the crossplay matchmaking issues, this game is actually really fun and chaotic playing with your buddies. Call, 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 call. Okay. Everything's resupplying for me, so. I'm throwing a smoke. No, it's smoke, it's smoke, chill out. Wait, don't no. oh, oh, it's what? Oh, that was oh. Clip it and oh, ship it. <laughs> Clip it oh. and ship it, boys and girls. Clip it oh, and God. ship it. No. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> no what way. Oh. Oh. I saw the napalm. Why are you... <laughs> Best of all, instead of the typical trio, you can play with up to three others. This is definitely not a mindless horde shooter. It can feel a bit that way, perhaps in the beginning, with it being on the lower difficulty and easier missions. I remember vividly playing after a stream session one night. We went from playing challenging to unlocking Helldive. It was some of the most intense co-op gaming experience I've had in a while. From the time we dived into it to the time we left, it was some of the most heart-pounding moments while gaming with no reinforcements, clinging on to dear life, hoping that one of you makes it out alive to successfully extract with those precious, precious samples you've gathered. Button. That's almost... Oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Did I not heal myself? Did I? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm slowed, I'm slowed. I might go down. I might go down. Yep, I think I'm gonna go down. Up, um, yep. 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Hey, abort. I mean, the show is aborting. The show is aborting. Call us in, call us in, call us in. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Extract 
extraction complete. Pelican one beginning ascent. The best way I could describe this game is a four-man tactical co-op horde shooter. Though the focus is completing the objectives and optional objectives in the name of liberty, working and communicating with your teammates is essential for your success. You can party up with your friends or join up with randoms unless you rather opt out and run solo, which is possible to do. It can be very challenging and rewarding, at least to me. Your mileage may vary here. There's literally nine levels of difficulty with Helldiver being the highest. The mission structure has a lot of variety from just go there and kill shit, although you will be doing a lot of that as you make your way towards an objective. As you progress and bump up the difficulty, there's even more from launching a big ass missile to uploading data that requires the person on the team to carry a hard drive to destroying a nest of terminates or a fabricator with automatons. I love the fact that it's not like two or three mission varieties and even the environment and time of day changes too depending on the planet you're on. You could be fighting at night when visibility is low or because there are clouds of smoke or sandstorm covering your vision. It makes for a really immersive experience. The gameplay's foundation is solid. Every game is going to be repetitive, but it's whether or not the gameplay loop is enough to keep you engaged with the game. Arrowhead not only made a game that is engaging, but because it's fun. It's a game that they themselves would want to play, instead of some corporate hired up telling them, we need you to make it like this. In Helldivers 2, you drop in a mission with or without your squad, blast your way through automatons or terminates until you complete the objective and extract with your life. However, everything happens in real time and is based on the performance of the community as a whole where things may go. At first, we were just fighting the Terminids, and now as of writing this review, we are now fighting a war on two fronts, fending off the automaton forces too. In an interview on PlayStation Blog, game writer at Arrowhead Stefan Flowers had this to say, what's unique about the story of Helldivers 2 is that it's driven by the player community. Planning for that is a huge challenge. We have what we think will happen, but we ultimately can't control what the players do, which as a player I find cool, but as as a writer, I find scary. As for the story ahead, all I can say is that the galaxy will look very different a few months from now than it does today. From its diverse mission structure to the movement and the gunplay, your character's movements feel weighty, influenced by the environment and the armor you're wearing. Cold planets and snowy terrains add to the challenge, slowing you down as you traverse the environment. Meanwhile, desert-like planets will cause your gun to overheat quicker. This game is beautiful to look at when you're not running for dear life. Each planet boasts a distinct appearance that sets it apart, giving it a unique identity from the colors and terrain. I love the skybox for this game and its environment giving you a whole cinematic feel straight out of a Lucasfilm Star Wars movie or The Mandalorian. I would also like to take the time to acknowledge how great the intro cutscene was and their score for this game. From the time as you're loading into a mission to the music during combat, they did a wonderful job that just gets you pumped up to spread some good old freedom, you know? Having good positioning and awareness of where your teammates and enemies are relative to you can be the difference between life and death of your teammates, especially if you aren't careful with friendly fire being on. Whether it's bullets, grenades, or stratagems like an airstrike or napalm, if you don't properly communicate with your team, you can definitely end up wiping them or accidentally stepping into your own teammates' line of sight. We definitely had plenty of moments like that already. Moments of accidental team wipes underscore the need for positioning and strategy. With the limited lives you have for a mission, with up to 20 if you're in a squad of 4, while only having 5 if you're solo. Gun recoil varies with stance and first person aiming is an option. I appreciate the transitioning between third and first person is beautifully seamless. It's this and the shooting that Arrowhead absolutely nailed to perfection here. From my understanding, this is also something that requires double the amount of work in order to achieve instead of it simply being only in first or third person. While shooting the enemies don't display any sort of damage number, which isn't a problem 
come to me here personally. Some enemies do have and require aiming for specific areas to exploit their weaknesses. It's so satisfying to visually see where you're shooting at enemies when their limbs start to fall off with dismemberment. At the moment, with the current weapon variety, it seems to be lacking to me at least, but it makes up for its amazing gunplay in this game. I'd imagine additional war bonds will be added to this game and the weapon variety will expand further. Progression involves leveling up, acquiring stratagems, and upgrading ship modules. Stratagems are special equipment that enhances the team's capability and may turn the tides of battle. These are ordinates you can call in during a mission. Some have unlimited use while others are limited. Successful completion of a mission rewards experience and requisition slips, one of the game's different currency that enables you to expand your arsenal of stratagems. These range from ammo resupplies, rocket launchers, barrages, to airstrikes. All of these outside of eagles, orbitals, and sentries can be shared with your teammates. Each stratagems require a specific cheat code input in order to deploy, adding a layer of engagement to gunplay. Even when your teammates die, those that are still alive still have to send in new reinforcements to get your buddy back into action again. Team dynamics are crucial with limited lives emphasizing the importance of survival and strategy. Meanwhile, ship upgrades require samples and these will be necessary if you want added benefits to your stratagems, like reducing cooldowns to equal stratagems or an additional salvo to orbital strikes. From your common green samples, rare orange samples, and the coveted super uranium pink samples, Samples, which I have a video on how to best secure those samples if you want to check out. Link below and at the end of this video. In Helldivers, War Bonds function similarly to battle passes seen in other games. There's a free and premium version. Useful items are available in these War Bonds. Once you have a War Bonds, these don't expire and you can unlock items at your leisure. But you have to unlock enough items in order to progress to the next page. They require medals you earn through finding them in game or completing missions to unlock. Same with requisition slips and even real money currency called super credits can be found through exploring. Blasting through red or metal blue doors or saluting the yellow beacons you see around. I've put about close to 30 hours in this game and by that time I reached a point where I had enough super credits if I wanted to buy the premium war bond from just running missions and exploring. Microtransaction, often a contentious issue, seems fair in Helldivers, providing an alternative means of progression without gouging the players. In Helldivers Superstore where it takes super credits, prices are reasonable, offering cosmetics without exorbitant costs. These ranges from 150 to 500 super credits, which is roughly 5 US dollars at most, a modest amount compared to other games' microtransaction models. The War Bond system and the earnable super credits provide a balanced approach to acquiring new gear without feeling pressured to spend real money. Arrowhead CEO Johan Pielstead responded that, You have to earn the right to monetize. I truly believe that if people wanted to support this title, they have an option, but we're never forcing anyone to do so. They're not asking you $20 for just one skin like the vast majority of games nowadays that feature any sort of microtransaction. Looking at you, Apex Legends, Destiny, and Call of Duty. So after seeing how the war bond works and the fact you literally can earn the premium currency in this game, I don't see a problem with it. The people who are complaining about this game more than likely don't even own the game. I know as mentioned in my previous Helldivers video that while yes, this is another live service game, but it's not asking me for $70 on top of it with a battle pass. This game is only $40 and there's plenty of content here. In addition to the free content updates that they have planned, because of this, I personally don't see an issue with it. But hey, we don't have to agree on this. Now, here are some things I would love to see either change or added to the game in the future outside of the new faction and mech suit eventually coming to the game. Prior to the recent patch, those that would AFK for 24 hours if not more so that others couldn't play taking up a server slot and the server capacity getting increased, thank god. This game could also definitely use a loadout for the different enemies or missions, especially if there will be new factions or enemy types added to this game later. It would be a very useful feature just to have even now when you're facing automatons or terminids for an eradicate mission since you would probably be running a different setup. Minimize the amount of crashing that this game seems to have whether you're on PC or PS5. It seems to happen more often than we like, especially when it's happening during a mission. 
don't want that. I would like to see some way to punish or report toxic team killers if you dare play with randoms who don't realize resources are shared in this game and or to prevent the host from kicking a player once the team is trying to extract or something because I've seen people say that they had that happen to them which is quite unfortunate. Having some sort of enemy codex or bestiary would be nice. I usually have to google the enemy when there's a personal order to kill x amount of stalkers for example and maybe if you kill enough of them over time you can gather more insight that's collected or can be referred to later. The mantling in this game could be better, it seems off to me and isn't as fluid as I would like it to be or maybe the ability to climb higher because it seems quite limited. Another that's a rather common complaint is people wishing that there was a jump or roll. I personally don't care for the jump as much but rolling would be nice besides the dolphin dive. Armor in this game could have more color variety or maybe something similar to Destiny shaders but without the microtransactions attached to it like how it was in Lords of the Fallen with armor tinks. I did see Johan's response to someone asking about it that that's something that they're going to be discussing so hopefully we do see that sometime in the future. Another Another feature I would love to see is more ability to close off your lobby if you want to play solo or capture footage like me as a creator. Also a private session or something of the latter so others can't join up even if it's currently open to friends only. Other weapons in the game besides the breaker shoddy could use a buff because that seems to be the common meta in the higher difficulties because the other weapon isn't as viable. Stratagems could use a buff too like the 380 orbital barrage, it misses more so hits where you want it because of the spread. Despite its initial setback, Helldivers has made its mark, surpassing sales on both PS5 and PC. It distinguished itself from many AAA live service games that aims high but fell short. My experience on PC has been overwhelmingly positive with the game's diverse mission structure and difficulty levels, providing an immersive and varied experience. Environmental challenges and limited visibility add an extra layer of realism, making each mission unpredictable and engaging. The necessity for precise communication due to the risk of friendly fire along with the variety of strategic options offered by the different stratagems uniquely position Helldivers. Moreover, the approachable and transparent communication from Arrowhead CEO and developers with the community truly sets it apart from other studios. I'm definitely looking forward to the future content plans for this game. While the game still faces certain performance issue, its core experience remains engaging. If Arrowhead continues to enhance the games with quality of life improvements and added updates, it could achieve great success. Helldivers 2 is a game that does live service right, and also for those who are uncertain due to the negative feedback, the decision ultimately rests with you. But I hope this review aids in making an informed decision. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a gun emoji in the comments section and share your thoughts on the game. Subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful and for more Helldivers content, thanks for watching. <laughs>